Is there really a balance between regulation and liberty? Probably at present, the answer is no, and SpaceX's case is a typical example. It is true that SpaceX has grown to where it is today thanks to government support. However, once that development goes beyond the scope of government regulation and control, it's time to restrain it. And if you're wondering how to do that, in my observation, using bureaucracy as a trap is always the ideal choice. That's what SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell cryptically revealed in her latest tweet. Find out everything in today's Tech Map episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. While the U.S. national election is coming closer, the tension between SpaceX and the Red Tape Party has been hotter than ever. In recent months, the story of the regulatory conflicts between them has made headlines all around the world regarding Starship Flight 5 and two Falcon launches last year. On Monday, September 30th, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration again suggested another investigation for SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket, which had launched Dragon's Crew 9 mission on Saturday, September 28th. As the FAA announced, SpaceX must investigate why the second stage of its workhorse Falcon 9 rocket malfunctioned after a NASA astronaut mission on Saturday. After sending two astronauts to the International Space Station for NASA, the booster experienced an off-nominal deorbit burn, making the second stage safely land in the ocean. But outside of the targeted area, this is the third time in three months the workhorse rocket is grounded for investigation. Fortunately, like two previous ones, the latest anomaly didn't cause any public injury or property damage, and the astronaut crew docked the ISS safely. Therefore, many people believe that SpaceX Falcon 9 will be back to launch soon, and SpaceX also manifests its friendly cooperation with the regulator through a post on X. We will resume launching after we better understand root cause. The mildness of this issue is almost the exact opposite of what the company endured around mid-September. At that point, Starship's important Flight 5 was ready to fly, but a surprising FAA announcement required them to wait until November, probably after the U.S. national election, at the earliest to conduct the test. This is a move that SpaceX criticizes as not based on a new safety concern, but instead driven by superfluous environmental analysis. The most notable consideration listed by the FAA is the permit for operating Starship's water deluge system. The hardware has operated in Starbase for over a year, but now has recently become the target for fines, especially since the CNBC article in August, saying SpaceX was discharging deluge water without TCEQ authorization and polluting the environment. SpaceX pushed back, saying their system only uses clean drinking water and is monitored closely with no harmful contaminants found. Afterward, SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwynne Shotwell also enters the battle, calling regulators' actions against the company nonsense. As part of a panel of members from the Texas Space Commission, Shotwell told the House Appropriations Committee that SpaceX hasn't had specific issues with Texas regulators, but has with federal entities. We work very closely with organizations such as the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, she said. You may have read a little bit of nonsense in the papers recently about that, but we're working quite well with them. Indeed, on its website, SpaceX confirmed they were operating in good faith under a multi-sector general permit under the supervision of the TCEQ. TCEQ officials were physically present at the first testing of the deluge system and given the opportunity to observe operations around the launch. Shotwell maintained that the system, which she said resembles an upside-down showerhead, was licensed and permitted by TCEQ. We built this kind of upside-down showerhead to basically cool the flame as the rocket was lifting off. That was licensed uh, and permitted by TCEQ. However, TCEQ has not confirmed giving SpaceX permission for it, which led to $3,750 fines at the end of August for operating Starship's launch pad water deluge system without the proper permits. The state agency has said the company received a stormwater permit, a type that's usually quickly approved, but did not have the permit required for the discharge of industrial wastewater produced by launches. That type of permit requires significant technical review and usually takes almost a year to 
approve. This should not be confused with the $148,300 fine on September imposed on SpaceX by the EPA. This ruling also noted a lack of required water permits for each of the seven water deluge activations between 2023 and 2024 plus another separate liquid oxygen spill in 2022. It means SpaceX should apply for an individual discharge permit for each activation, even though they affirm their operation has little to nothing in common with industrial waste discharges covered by individual permits, and they applied for that type of permit pretty much later, in July 2024. At this point, I wonder why the EPA didn't warn SpaceX or even find them sooner in the period between 2023 and 2024 when the water deluge activations were happening. It's similar to the story of two Falcon 2023 launches, where basically the company told the FAA about all changes in advance, and the FAA didn't make them stop. It's ironic that the federal agency is now reusing the same story to find SpaceX. Explaining this attack, Shotwell said that after TCEQ licensed and permitted the water deluge system, the EPA came in and didn't like that license or that permit, and wanted to turn it into a federal permit, which SpaceX is working on right now. In conclusion, there was dissent over paperwork between two national agencies, TCEQ and the EPA, and a private company like SpaceX is a direct victim of that confusion. The firm believed their activity was covered under one of the generalized permits licensed by TCEQ, but in fact, the regulations are much more complicated. As you know, they also need a federal permit, including individual permits for each water deluge activation. Perhaps they misunderstood, or it's possible that they were provided with bad information by someone at the Texas regulator. The FAA and EPA also failed to warn SpaceX in time, and now they are using those reasons to continuously attack SpaceX. In contrast to some old space bodies operating under the cost plus contract, preferring delay and cost overrun, new space like SpaceX are too afraid of bureaucracy. It is perceived as a hindrance to the rapid growth and innovation in the aerospace sector. America is being smothered by ever larger mountains of irrational regulations from ever more new agencies that serve no purpose apart from the aggrandizement of bureaucrats. Elon Musk wrote on X as the pioneer in the wave of commercial space flight toward the ultimate goal to explore other planets in our solar system and beyond. SpaceX is flying at an unprecedented pace as the world's most active launch services provider. SpaceX is also safely and reliably launching astronauts, satellites, and other payloads on missions. To make multi-planetary life a reality, SpaceX has invested a lot of money, time, and effort into its greatest brainchild, Starship. Every flight of Starship has made tremendous progress and accomplished increasingly difficult test objectives, making the entire system more capable and more reliable. In its fifth test flight, the company will reach a new level, attempt to return the Super Heavy booster to the launch site, and catch it in mid-air. This will be a singular novel operation in the history of rocketry. The flight will be a major stepping stone for critical national missions, such as returning astronauts to the moon for NASA's Artemis program. NASA has selected SpaceX's Starship vehicle as the human-rated lander to ferry astronauts between lunar orbit and the moon's south pole for the first two Artemis crew landings expected sometime later this decade. Therefore, Starship needs to be operational as soon as possible, and the early-stage test flights are important for proving the rocket's reliability and testing more complex technologies, such as in-space refueling, required to make the Artemis lunar landings possible. From a broader perspective, our rival China aims to land its astronauts on the moon by 2030, and NASA Administrator Bill Nelson wants U.S. astronauts to return to the lunar surface first. We certainly understand and appreciate the the importance of beating China to the moon, Kevin Coleman, FAA's Associate Administrator for Space Transportation, told lawmakers recently, We just had a conversation recently with NASA leadership where that was re-emphasized. Our commitment certainly is to support this industry and our nation in getting to the moon before China. Unfortunately, regulatory reviews are obviously detrimental to national goals by directly delaying Starship test flights as well as the whole SpaceX operation. It's unacceptable, and large U.S. agencies like the FAA should learn to make the regulations be in harmony with the U.S. government's national security and foreign policy interests. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.